Uh, Trayvon Brumel also, I think, is coming out of this competition very, very excited. So uh, Trayvon wins the men's 100 with a time of 9.93. Uh, Fred Curley got second with a 9.98. Christian Coleman got third with a 10.04. Noah Lyles in fourth with a 10.05. Uh, Let's see, Lee Tobogo uh, got fifth with a 10.12. Arian Knighton, sixth place with a 10.14. Kyrie King, seventh place with a 10.16. Kenny Bednarik, eighth with a 10.18. And then Andre de Grasse, ninth place with a 10.21. So, uh, like I said, uh, Trayvon Morel is definitely coming out of this race happy. Uh, of course, he would have loved to have run faster. A 9.93 isn't the fastest time in the world, but what is bigger for him is the competition that you beat. I mean, he mentioned in an interview after this race that for him, it was personal. Yeah, man, it, big thing is like, I knew it was a great field of competitors. My biggest thing is taking all the heat that I did last year, even this season, like everybody said, oh, he can run when nobody's in a race. So for me, it was personal. Not against nobody in the race, but more so for myself to show people like, man, I'm here to compete just like everybody else. I don't train to lose. So when people complain, there's things about, oh, is he going to show up at the big races? Are he going to do this? Like, this year, I'm, I'm worrying only about myself. I don't care about what the naysayers say. I'm focusing more on me. But at the end of the day, this is still a competition. You know, you can throw 10 touchdowns, you know, and, and break these touchdown records, or you can score 90 points in a game and all of that. But if your team loses... Are you going to think about the the amount of points you scored more or are you going to care more about how, you know, the, the win that you got? So I think that's what Trayvon Brumel is excited about. It's like, yeah, I got a big win against some big names. Like these are people that are going to be at the USA Championships. They're going to be at Worlds. And I ended up coming out here and winning. So I think he's very excited about that. Um, looking into someone that might be a little bit nervous on, on what's going on. I mean, Christian Coleman. Like, so... A streak just ended with Christian Coleman that not a lot of people are talking about. Actually, no, a, a streak just ended with Christian Coleman that nobody is talking about. So Christian Coleman going into this competition, he is one of two men to go three straight years after first breaking 10 seconds in the 100 and never running it, uh, running a 10 second race three times in a row. Let me explain what that means. So back in 2016, Christian Coleman broke 10 for the first time. Since then, up until this past weekend, he never ran a 10 point anything, a 10-0, 10-1, 10-2. He never ran a 10 second race three times in a row. The only other person that can say they can do that for that extended period of time is Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt was able to do it for eight seasons in a row. And Coleman did this for three seasons. Obviously, I'm not including the times that he was out for the suspension. He had three active seasons in a row that he was able to do this. And no one else can say that. Like I said, uh, Tyson Gay can't say that. Asafa Powell can't say that. Maurice Green can't say that. Carl Lewis can't say that. Justin Gatlin can't say that. You know, none of no none of these sprinters have the ability ability to say that. And he was in that elite club, and now. He's going back down just like everyone else. You know, now he's with everyone else. He's taken off that pedestal of extraordinary consistency and he's now back with every other sprinter. So um, I would be a little bit concerned uh, if I were him. Like, yo, I'm, I used to be this guy that that runs nines like all the time. Like that was my my thing. And now I've run three in a row in in the tens. One, things that, one thing that is different from everyone else this year is that he does have the buy. So he doesn't have to peak in three weeks like everyone else does uh, for the USA Championships. He just has to be ready for Worlds, which is happening in, uh, like I said, a little bit under two months now. And so, yes, he's he's able to still train and he, he shouldn't, he doesn't need to be ready to run nines in a few weeks. He's gotta be ready to run it in, in a little over uh, a month and a half. But I'm still a little bit nervous, man. Like. You used to be this guy that was super duper consistent and, and now you're not there right now. Uh, we're, I think we're going to have to see a sub 10 from him before he gets to the world championships. Like if he goes into the world championships with the season's best of a 10 point anything, if anything, if it's a 10 0, whatever it is, I'm kind of concerned if I'm Coleman because it's going to take a 9 7 to be able to win the world championships. And so if he's going into that with a personal best of a 10 anything, 
he's going to be in a really bad spot. It's going to be tough. I mean, there's so many athletes right now that are running nine eights consistently, you know, nine, nine sevens or people that are just consistent in the low nine, nine. I mean, obviously you got the Trayvon Bramels, the Fred Curleys, the Lamont Jacobs, uh, you got the uh, you got the Omen Yalas of the world. Like, there's a lot of athletes here that are running in those nine, seven, nine, eight ranges. And if you're going into the World Championships with a ten point anything, I think you're going to be really having to dig yourself out of a hole that I'm not sure if you can do in just three races there. So, uh, I, if I'm Coleman, I'm really trying to to get this thing buttoned up because you don't you don't like breaking those big streaks. You know, you want to stay in the the conversation with Bolt as long as you can, and you know, having that drop off right at this time before a World Championship not the best. So, uh, he's got some time to, to, to get back to it, but you know, he's, he's got to, he's got to wrap up, uh, you know, he's got to you know, tighten that, uh, tighten that ship up. Before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. As track athletes, we're going to be running tons of miles every week and can be really sweaty and gross after a hard day of practice, but those days are behind us. Manscaped just sent me their brand new performance package, which comes with the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball deodorant, Crop Reviver toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. Look, I've tried a lot of razors in my day, but the Lawnmower 4.0 is just different. Its ceramic blade helps reduce grooming accidents. LED light allows you to shave anytime, anywhere, and since it's waterproof, you can even take it in the shower if you want. When shopping with Manscaped, use code TWN at checkout to get 20% off your entire order, plus free shipping worldwide. Show up to your next meet looking good. If you want to be the best, you got to look the best. Link is in the description, and now back to the video.